Thank you very much. Senator Merkley. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And first I'll uh, speak to the issue of uh, forest fires because we really have seen that the longer, drier, hotter summers that occur in my home state of Oregon are producing a lot more fires, a lot more destructive fires. We've seen that happen in Canada. We've seen it happen in Alaska. We've seen it happen in Australia. So we really have a feedback loop there that I want to draw attention to where climate change is driving more fires and fires are producing more carbon. It's not a helpful feedback loop, but it's also that the current fires are not the same as the natural fires before we put so much carbon in the air to change the climate to produce these long, hot uh, summers either. They also produce more lightning strikes, which means more fires are, are lit in that in that fashion, which, so if we want less forest fires, we, we better uh, curb the carbon contribution. I wanted to uh, turn to uh, any information that you'd like to share about the feedback loop, a different feedback loop, in which the profits from the fossil industry are pumped back into political campaigns, not just publicity and misinformation campaigns, but actually into political campaigns to essentially uh, use democracy to elect champions for the fossil industry to help continue to manifest the misinformation, disinformation, and opposition to taking on this very serious challenge. But thank you, Senator Merkley. Just on the negative feedback loop, you're absolutely right. If you look at the last 10 years of temperature, um, I believe that nine of the 10 are the hottest recorded years in human history, with each one basically being hotter than the last one. So it's very clear that as the Earth gets warmer, for example, with respect to forest fires, we get more forest fires, production of more um, greenhouse gas emissions, and then greater climate change. And so we are in a negative feedback loop there very much. Um, but it, it also does apply um, in the political sphere. As you're suggesting, the tremendous uh, profits that are made by uh, big oil and big gas have been um, rechanneled into the political system. And some of it is through uh, academic studies, as we discussed, hundreds of millions of dollars went uh, in that direction. Some of it goes through just general public relations and propaganda efforts, and some of it goes directly into the political system through campaign contributions and campaign expenditures. And I think uh, y your chairman has been um, very focused on the role that Citizens United has played in this process by essentially transforming every corporate treasury in the country into a potential political slush fund for the CEOs to spend as they will. Well, it is a big challenge in the uh, fossil fuel industry had about $300 billion of net profit last year. Even 1% of that reinvested in the political campaigns uh, results in a significant corrupting factor in terms of the, the vision of government by and for the people versus by and for the powerful. I want to turn to uh, plastics. Uh, plastics are largely made from fossil gas which is a more accurate way to describe it, or methane gas, and to use the industry's preferred term of, of natural gas. And um, one of the big goals of the industry is, as they see people using less gas for home, home heating, less fossil gas for home heating, is, well, where can we expand? So there's a vision of tripling plastics production over the next couple uh, decades, thus tripling the use of fossil gas for that purpose. We see in this area misinformation and disinformation as well. And uh, did your investigation touch any on the misinformation and disinformation regarding plastics? Um, I don't want to say that it did not, Senator, and there, there was and is so much to absorb uh, that I, I can't remember, but I'm definitely happy to get back to you on that. I mean, there's certainly a lot of mention of plastics, which are uh, an essential part of the problem, obviously, but I don't remember about specific uh, efforts to mislead and deceive related to plastic. Great, I, I will appreciate uh, any additional work you may do in the future to help touch into that plastic space as well, because very closely uh, related to the, the broader misinformation, disinformation campaign. And the more we know about the impact 
of plastics on ecosystem health and on, of course, trash, and of, but now micro and nanoplastics affecting our human bodies and plastics are an endocrine disruptor. So it's, it's a big deal and there's a lot of misinformation going there in an effort to promote a future of a lot more plastics damaging our ecosystems. And, and, and there are huge, I know, plastic dumps that have essentially formed in different oceans, um, the conglomerations of plastic. So. No, absolutely true, and, and it, it's it, almost impossible to get it out. If you think of floating bottles, people think we well, can get that out. But you can get it micro and the nanoplastics out of the ocean, not, not uh, doable. I want to turn to carbon capture and sequestration. And uh, CCS uh, is often promoted as, well, we can, we can burn uh, fossils, and then we can capture the carbon out of the smokestack, if you will, and we can store it in the ground, so stop worrying. Is CCS a magical cure to the challenge of uh, carbon combustion, fossil fuel combustion, or is it basically part of a misleading uh, strategy, kind of like the algae strategy you referred to, that is intended to make people say, uh, don't worry, be happy? Well, um, I don't want to write it off completely, but certainly we found that the way it was treated by the oil and gas companies was as a shiny, flashy object that would capture public attention, and, um, but did not actually uh, command a serious investment of the resources in capital expenditures of the oil and gas companies. So they certainly are not treating it as any kind of panacea. Um, and it, it does seem to be part of a pattern where the big oil companies, rather than focusing on the things we know we can actually do and get done, focus on things that can't be done. So uh, we know that the wind and solar and other renewable energy sources um, are right now the best pathway out of this. Um, but we you know, saw the focus on algae, for example, instead, which looks to me very much like a marketing effort. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Merkley, and thank you for your very impressive work on the plastics issue. Um, 